TV. Okay, so, so you, you know what's interesting is that this year, 2023, marks the 50th anniversary of the spoon bed. So it's 50 years old. That was when Uri Geller, who happens to be a friend of mine, uh, actually bent a spoon in 1973 on the Merv Griffin show, long before you were born. So I'll tell you what, so, Cindy, uh, the most important thing is that's just an ordinary spoon, right? Right. Okay, here, I'll tell you what, the first thing I'm gonna have you do is hold it with both your hands, hold it up to your heart, close your eyes, and just breathe deep. And allow your energy to just kind of enter the spoon, the metal of the spoon. You're absorbing the metal of the spoon. And now go ahead, as you can open your eyes. Very good, see, she's the woman who knows. And <laughs> if you would, take this pen. Now be careful, it's a Sharpie. If you would, just go ahead and just write your first name in the center, in the, in the center of the bowl of the spoon right there, okay? And then underneath your, um, your name, I want you to write, okay, 2023. Okay, and that way we time stamp this moment, and that way we know that, uh, Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'll take the pen back, that's how I got it. And now Cindy, I'll take the spoon as well, so I can just show these people. You've written your name in the center of the bowl of the spoon. And as you can see, Cindy, you are also, you're right-handed, am I right? Yes. I'm a mind reader. <laughs> I'm also very observant. <laughs> if you would, hold your right hand up flat, okay? Okay? Place your left hand directly on top of this, okay? Close your eyes. I'm going to touch your hands very, very lightly. I want you to count how many times you feel you touch your hands. But don't count out loud. Just count in your mind, okay? Take a deep breath first, and then we'll begin. If you feel me touching your hands starting now, I'm going to have you count in your mind. Each time you feel me touch your hands, you're going to count in your mind. Every time you feel a touch, a tap, a shock, anything at all, you're counting in your mind. Now, are you counting at this point? Yeah. Okay, keep counting. Keep your eyes closed, keep counting. Each time you feel me touch your hands, each time you feel a tap, you're counting in your mind. Now, uh, still counting? Mm -hmm. Good, open your eyes. How many times did you feel me touch your hand? Six times. Six times, so top and bottom in different places? Right. Six times. Yeah. How many times did you see me touch your hands? Zero. 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 Wow. At least 50. Here, close your eyes again. I'm going to hold one hand on top, one hand below. When I count to three, you're going to push your hands together. One, two, three. Pushing your hands together. You feel the spoon like it's pushing upwards in the middle, like it's bending in the middle. Yes? No? No. No. Okay, hold on. One more time. Take a deep breath. And push your hands together. Do you feel the spoon like it's bending in the middle, like it's pushing upwards, or pushing downwards against the fingers of your, of your right hand? Not really. Not really. Okay. It's not an exact science. Either. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, that's right. You can open your eyes. She's always good at that. She's good at just opening your eyes prematurely. <laughs> um, uh, let's just see how well we did. Okay. Just bring your hands apart. Let's take a look at this. Oh, look at that. You can't see. The spoon is actually starting to bend, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you didn't feel that at all? No. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. So, uh, now, now I, I know you want to physically actually see this take place. So let me see if I can do this. I'm going to just put this on my hand, so if I can get it a little bit more. Wow. Wow. What? Oh, what? my gosh. <laughs> see, now the spoon is actually bending wow. a little bit more. Yeah. I'll come over here so they can, like, so you can see from up close. Uh, it is amazing. And ultimately, you can create uh, what people might call, well, basically the idea is to create the most amount of energy with a minimal amount of effort. So what is it about like bending metal and the psychic experience? And I like to think of it as this. Basically, when you think of spoons or forks, you really are looking at things that you take for granted, right? I mean, basically, spoons and forks, they're in our lives. We don't really think too much about them. So my thinking is that, uh, at least from a mentalist perspective, I'll say that uh, the idea of bending metal with the mind actually shows us, <laughs> right? 
I mean, it basically shows us that, uh, that if we look at the mundane as maybe perhaps more extraordinary, we can bend reality in the direction that we choose. Right. Now here, I'll tell you what, let me unbend this just to show you, you can physically unbend it, you can physically, you know, you physically straighten it out, right? Let's try something that would be humanly impossible, or at least seemingly so. So rather than bringing the energy outwards, let's imagine spiraling the energy inwards. There's your name, right? Mm -hmm. Now, very, very slowly, ever so subtly, you see the rope spoon rotating around its vertical axis. No effort at all between my thumb and forefinger. It just continues to rotate, continues to spin, continues to turn, continues to move when it stops. Look, the spoon is actually twisted 180 degrees around at the neck of the spoon. <laughs> wow. Creating a kind of permanent Linda Blair effect. Yeah. Put it in here. Take that spoon, Steve, try to untwist it. You find it's actually very difficult to untwist, even if you were to try, right? Yeah, this is nuts, honestly. I know. It's this amazing. is legit a hard spoon, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you for uh, clarifying that for the audience. In fact, it's so interesting because the idea is that, uh, is that if you do this with just a light touch, so it's the idea is that just, just a light touch, you can actually cause and interaction to take place, what? right? And ultimately, ultimately, you can create this uh, strange thing, which can still do the same thing that, say, a family heirloom can do. So this is what we call an impossible object, basically an object that once people hear the story behind it, they say that's impossible. But given the fact that you actually got to write your name on the center of the bowl of the spoon before it went through its transformation, does sort of help to raise the question of just what is impossible anyway. So Cindy, look, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna make this a little bit something more something that you can wear around your wrist. Look at that, it makes a little bracelet over here, so that, and it's got your inscription on the inside, so you can take it to summer camp. Yeah. You're getting my star. All right, well, thank you so much, Cindy. Let's give her a big round of applause. Please be careful on your way down the stairs.